Hey everyone, this is the Music Tech Help Guy. In this video, I'll show you how to take a single vocal sample and transform it into a playable EXS24 sampler instrument in Logic Pro 10. You can actually do this with any audio sample, not just vocals, but I'm using a vocal sample because I like the sound that I get from vocal samples. So here's what the sample sounds like as is. I just cut it out of a song that I was working with. Irony. And then let me give you an example of the finished product. So in this sample, she's singing a couple different pitches, but we want to lock this to a single pitch. So what I'll do is I'll use the vocal transformer plugin for this. Just make sure to click the robot eyes. I can't say that word. Robo robotize? Robot eyes? Robotize? The robotize button. Irony. And then you can set the pitch of the sample here. But before I shift the notes, I want to do something with the sound design of the sample. For creating ambient pads and such, I find that adding heavy reverb really works well. Here I'll use Valhalla Shimmer. I'll also reverse the sample by clicking the reverse button in the region inspector. Now the note doesn't sustain for too long, so I'd like to add the tape delay before the reverb and pull up the feedback to close to 100%, but not over 100%, and this will help draw out the length of the feedback more. I'll let this reverb tail play and pay attention to where the end of the tail mostly fades out. So now my one bar sample is now a 14 or 15 bar sample. So just a side note, you don't have to follow the same sound design process as me. I just find that reverb and delay helps to draw out and synthesize a nice sounding pitched sound Try playing around with reverbs, different delays, distortion, filters, whatever. Just design a sound that you like. So shameless plug, this is the same way that a lot of the instruments in my Divine Waves collection were created. It's a collection of 53 original sample-based instruments for EXS24. So if you're interested in purchasing it, it's only 29 bucks, and I'll leave a link to it in the video description below. I used a lot of different sound sources, guitars, strings, and yes, vocals. But the key point here is that the sound design plugins and processing that you add will take on the character of the original sound source. Next, what I'll do is just hold Option and duplicate this region somewhere after the length of the reverb tail. With both selected, I'll press J to join the clips. And then the second sample, I'm just using this as sort of like a placeholder to extend the clip, and I'll trim off that duplicate sample. I'm just doing this to create a region to define the length of the sample. Then I'll go up to Edit, Repeat, Multiple, and I'll create 48 additional regions. So this will give me 49 total regions that I can pitch shift from A0 all the way up to A4. So four octaves, 48 notes, plus one extra note, A4, so 49 total. Next, I'll adjust the pitch of each clip by automating the pitch knob in the Vocal Transformer plugin. I'll hit A to show automation, turn on region-based automation, and then select the pitch option under the vocal transformer. So I'll go through and pull up the pitch on each clip one by one. It seems like it'd be a long process, but it really only takes a few minutes to get the whole thing done. So when you're all done, you'll have 49 clips with 49 different pitch positions, ranging from A0 to A4. Next, I'll select the track to select all of the regions, and then right-click and choose Export as Audio Files. 
make sure that bypass effects plugins is not selected because you want the effects and pitch shift to be rendered into each sample. Next, I'll open up an empty EXS24 instrument and then open the edit window. Then in the folder that I saved the sample files, you'll see all 49 sample files. And the great thing about this is that all 49 are in chromatic order from A0 to A4. So there's no need to rename or label these. Then I'll just drag all 49 of these into the EXS24 edit window. You'll then get three options to map these in the EXS24. The option I'll use is the contiguous zones option. This maps them continuously across the keyboard from a set starting note. So I'll set my starting note on A0. Just make sure to press the enter key after typing in the pitch because otherwise it'll still think it's starting on C1. You'll see all of the samples mapped down here across the keyboard and I'll pull out the range of the top and bottom most samples across the extreme upper and lower end. Now you might be thinking, why not just create one sample and then map it across the keyboard and do the pitch shifting here in the sampler? Well, the reason why is that when you extrapolate a sample across the keyboard, it pitch shifts the sample by increasing or decreasing the playback speed, which makes the sample shorter as you play higher, and it makes the sample longer as you play lower. I want to keep each sample the same length. Next, I'll select all of the samples and turn off the one-shot option for all of them. One-shot should really only be used for drums, where you want the full length of the sample to play regardless of how long you hold down the key. Next, in the EXS24 window, I'll pull up the volume velocity slider. So this affects how velocity affects the volume of the sample. So by narrowing this range, velocity is going to have less of an effect on the volume. For an instrument like this without velocity layers, I really don't like to have a wide velocity range. You can adjust the sample start and end point and the sample loop by going up to view and showing two columns, zone sample and zone loop. So I'll just start with one of the notes here. I'll click the down arrow here and open up the sample in the sample editor. The blue bar adjusts the sample start and end point. So essentially this is the in and out point of the sample. So I like it better now that the start point comes in later because it cuts off the front of the sample and there was a bit of a pitch scoop on the front end of the sample, so it's trimming that off. If you want the sample to have a loop, you can click the loop option and then go back into the sample editor and adjust the yellow range to set your loop range. Now, if you want to soften the loop point, you can add a crossfade to the loop up to 9,999 milliseconds. For this patch, I want to hear the full fade in and decay of the sample for notes that I hold out for a long time. So I'm going to turn off the loop option, but I wanted to show you this anyway, just in case you wanted to add a loop to your samples. Next, I'll copy and paste the start point to all of my other samples. If you use a loop, you can do the same for the loop parameters as well. To save the instrument, go up to Instrument Save As. This will create an EXS instrument file. Now the EXS file just saves the programming in the edit window. It doesn't save adjustments that you make in the main EXS window. So you can save that up here as a plugin setting, or better off, you can make a channel strip setting, which I'll show you how to do in just a bit. But there's a few things I like to adjust here before I save this. One thing I like to do is narrow the velocity volume slider a bit to reduce the velocity range, which I did before. And I also like to option click on this pitch modulation wheel router to disable the built-in vibrato modulation, because I'm not gonna use that. Then I also like to adjust the release and attack time on envelope two, which is the master volume envelope.
This helps soften the front end and back end of the samples. And it'll also draw out the end of the sample as I release the key. You can also add a filter in if you like. So to save this as a channel strip setting so you can recall it later, click the setting tab on the channel strip and then select save channel strip setting as and then give the patch a name. Now if I delete this track, I can easily recall the instrument at any time by making a new software instrument track, opening the library, click user channel strip settings, and then you'll find the setting you just saved. And it'll load up the EXS24 instrument with all of the sample programming and the EXS24 window adjustments saved into one channel strip setting. So that's how you can take a single audio sample and transform it into a playable sample-based EXS24 instrument. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to support the channel with a monthly donation, you can also check me out on Patreon as well. Thanks for the support, and thanks for watching.